Good morning and welcome OpenStack community. To kick things off, please welcome Jonathan Bryce. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Vancouver. This is uh, super exciting to be here. Vancouver is uh, an amazing spot. It is so beautiful here, and uh, it's, it's awesome to, uh, to have the summit. I was actually born in North Vancouver, so when you are walking around this beautiful venue, if you look across the inlet, that's North Vancouver. That's where I came from. And uh, it's cool to come back here with about 6,000 of our closest friends and, uh, and have a great week all uh, focused on OpenStack. So before we get started, we still have some people coming in, but we're going to go ahead and, and start rolling. We've got some, uh, some housekeeping items to get through. Um, just uh, to, uh, to kind of, I want to get a little bit of a feel for how many of you are here for your first time at an OpenStack Summit? Wow, OK. Well, welcome to the community. The, uh, the OpenStack Summits are really, really fun events. There's tons of work, tons of content. We have almost 500 sessions happening here this week. So there's something for everybody. And uh, you know, it's a great community that, that loves to, uh, to bring new people in. Um, if you are wondering how you find your way around this week, most of the information you need is around your neck right now. On that, uh, that badge you have, there's an insert. And uh, it folds out. It has the uh, Wi-Fi information. It has venue maps. It has the uh, overall schedule of events when uh, lunch and, and break times are. Um, but you know, just to, to, to really dive into the details, I recommend getting the mobile apps. And we have uh, the mobile app available in both the, uh, the Apple Store and the Android Store. And this has the schedule for every session throughout the week, where it is, uh, maps again, so you can find your way around. We are uh, in a very big venue. So just to help you orient yourself a little bit, we are in the, uh, the lower level here in this big blue square, uh, which is a really large space that we're doing the keynotes in. At the back of this hall is uh, the primary location for lunch that's served every day. Uh, there's also food available up on the, the main level, up by the marketplace, where we have our expo hall. And uh, the marketplace this time around in the summit is pretty amazing. The, the location that we're in, the room that it's in, is just fabulous. Uh, you should definitely go up there, check out our sponsors, check out the view, and, uh, and really take it all in. And we also have um, box lunches available up on level two uh, if, you, uh, if you just want something to, to grab quickly. Um, the convention center is split into two buildings. We are in this building that has the grass roof on it. It's the, the west building. And then the east building is a, uh, a short walk. Um, there's actually a, a tunnel that goes over to it. It's about 10 minutes. Most of the sessions are in the West Building. Um, one of the things that we're doing this time is we actually have a lot of communities that work with OpenStack and a lot of other technologies. And we're doing some collaboration days where, uh, where technologies like OpenNFV and CoreOS and others are, uh, are holding sessions throughout the week. And so if you want to participate in those, a lot of those are happening in the East Building. And you can, again, reach that through, um, through that walkway. Um, a couple of events today. We have lunch with our OpenStack Foundation board. Um, if you want to meet the board members, meet the, the people who um, are involved in the governance of the OpenStack Foundation, you can uh, go to lunch, 12.45 to 2 p.m. Um, they're going to be wearing badges that, that are red, and there'll be some other signs. You can talk to them, um, you know, tell them what you care about, tell them what you think we should be working on for the foundation, and where you want to see OpenStack going. And then tonight, the, uh, the expo hall opens up. And we're going to have uh, a booth crawl and happy hour um, starting at 6 p.m., from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And I, I, again, recommend you go check that out and, uh, and see our marketplace, see the sponsors that make this possible, see the companies who are innovating on top of OpenStack. Just the last few things before we uh, start to dive into some content this morning. Um, we have a, a, a Women of OpenStack group that, uh, that is um, really starting to get active. And uh, they had an event last night. But they have a couple of other sessions during this week that uh, if you are interested in diversity, and especially in gender diversity in tech and in OpenStack, we'd love for you to come and participate. 
and help us uh, you know, improve the situation there and, and move the needle. So on a 7 a.m. Tuesday morning, there's a, a working session and breakfast with the women of OpenStack group that you can, uh, you can join. The design summit, you know, this is one of the main reasons that, uh, that we all get together every six months is to set the direction and decide, you know, where is OpenStack going technically? What are we gonna do with the software? Um, this design summit, we've combined both the developer sessions and the operator sessions into a single design summit, and that takes place on the upper levels of, of this building here. Um, you know, I think that, that this is uh, gonna be really interesting to see as we get our developers and our operators together, solving issues, setting the direction, setting the priorities, uh, it, it's going to be awesome to see that collaboration happening. And, uh, and you know, as we do this, we're actually gonna have more operator sessions and uh, more design sessions than, than ever before. So it's, it's gonna be a really busy week for a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of the developers in the audience who are here to, to work and plan the future of OpenStack. We have a couple of things for you to take with you. You might remember that a year ago we launched a uh, super user publication, superuser.openstack.org, and we have the, uh, the first print copy of that here. Uh, it's got a guide to the summit. It's got information about Vancouver. It has uh, some feature articles about emerging technologies and, uh, and, and also interviews with various OpenStack users. So make sure you get your copy, flip through it, uh, and check it out. And of course, we always uh, try to put together a, a great giveaway for our attendees. And this time around, we, uh, uh, we have a, a windbreaker, a rain jacket. It's really nice. Um, I have actually seen hundreds of them already walking around the streets of Vancouver, which was pretty cool yesterday. Uh, but they are available in two colors. Uh, you go pick them up at our Stacker Swag Store. That is up one level on level one. It's just outside the marketplace. And, uh, and you, know, you get that with your registration. So make sure that you go pick up your jacket and, uh, and um, you know, join all of, uh, all of us as we wear it around Vancouver this week. So I wanna talk about some different things that we've been working on. And uh, this morning is, I'm, I'm really excited about the keynotes this morning because we've got some announcements, but we also have some uh, old users who are coming back, some new users who are going to be talking, and, uh, and we're also doing some demos. And these demos are pretty sweet, I think. Uh, you know, they're, they're, I think we're gonna be showing you some things you've probably never seen before. So that is what we're gonna do this morning. But first, I wanna set the stage a little bit. We've talked a lot at the OpenStack summits about how critical software development is. You know, this software-defined economy concept. And it's something that is impacting every company and every organization out there. It's how we innovate, it's how we compete, it's how we move faster. And it is something that is across all geographies and across all industries. You know, this isn't just about high tech, about technology software companies. You think about traditional, physical, capital intensive businesses, and you've got the hotel industry. You know, they've got a big physical footprint. The taxi industry, capital intensive, physically located. The retail industry. All of these industries are being disrupted by software, being disrupted by this application economy. If we just look at the, the taxi industry, you know, the ride-sharing services like Lyft, you've got Uber, they have had a dramatic impact on this industry. The price of a taxi medallion in New York City has dropped 20% since Uber was introduced. In San Francisco, the number of taxi rides has dropped 65% since Uber started service there. That is true disruption of an industry. And this is something that impacts everybody. You know, there's, there's not a, a, a real walled garden anymore that, that isn't, uh, isn't available to this. And so companies who, uh, you know, they may have a physical location, they may have a lot of physical locations, they have to deal with this too. And later this morning, we're going to be hearing from uh, the largest company in the world, Walmart, about how they're approaching this. And so I'm really excited to, uh, to, to hear the Walmart keynote later. But before we get to that, I want to touch on, on some of these trends that, that we're seeing. You know, technology constantly driven by buzzwords. And this is, this is one of those phrases right now, developer productivity. How many of you have, have heard this uttered repeatedly over the last couple of months? Something that gets said all the time, right? Developer productivity. You know, I've been a developer for a long time, and I guess I never realized how unproductive we were. 
I thought I was writing a lot of code. I thought I was, you know, building apps. But apparently, you know, we've been unproductive, and so everybody wants to make us productive now. And to do that, you know, it's tool after tool that comes out, Docker, Rocket, Mesos, Ansible, Kubernetes, you know, every, everything that, that comes out is oriented around this. But it can actually be pretty intimidating, this proliferation of tools. And ultimately, what it all comes down to, all of those applications, all of those tools, everything that happens is all about processing data, storing data, and moving data. You know, the basic foundation is still compute, storage, and networking. Now, ideally, our applications can get those building blocks quickly, securely, and in the location that's best for our users. So, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could have a global footprint that gave you access to those resources? You know, in a public cloud where it made sense, in a private cloud where you might have security or regulatory requirements, or you know, maybe even a cost profile that you can achieve better in a private cloud. Or a hosted private cloud if you want uh, to avoid multi-tenancy but don't want to take on all responsibility. You know, that, that would be a, a great vision if, uh, if you could do something like that. And you know, for those of you who have followed OpenStack, you know that that is the vision that we had when, uh, when we kicked this off and that our community has worked towards for a long time. This global footprint of interoperable clouds that bring together compute, storage, and networking resources. So, you know, as we look at, uh, at where we are now, we've reached a very big milestone for OpenStack. And I'm really excited to announce that we are now rolling out our first round of interoperability tests and requirements to define a common core that must be available in every OpenStack environment, private, public, or hybrid. And this is a huge step forward for us. It involves common code that's going to be available in every product or service that calls itself OpenStack and common APIs that work the same way. So all of these OpenStack environments, they look the same, they act the same, and this is tested and validated. Now, we are just getting started with this. You know, we're announcing this today, but uh, we've already worked with, um, with a few companies who have started to do this early. And uh, um, if you go to the openstack.org slash marketplace URL, you can start to see this information being shared today. This is now live. You'll notice that uh, with the OpenStack powered logo, there will also be an icon that, uh, that displays when a product or service has been tested. And if you drill into that, you can see exactly which capabilities they have, what they've enabled, what they're testing, what is validated, and what you know is going to be there. These 16 companies are live in the marketplace today with their testing results. And through the rest of 2015, we're going to go across all products and services that are OpenStack branded and put this in place and you will know what you're getting, what is available, and this is really creating an OpenStack-powered planet. When you see a product or service with that logo, you know what capabilities you're getting, and you can count on this as your solid foundation to build your applications on. This is compute, storage, and networking. That's what's, what, what that gives you. You know, this has been a cool process, too, as we've defined this. It's been a very community-driven process, and uh, I specifically want to thank Rob Hirschfeld and the DEF Core Committee and all of the people who put a lot of work into it because it has been a very massive effort to come to an agreement on what we need to have in these clouds, how to test it, and, uh, and so I just want to thank the DEF Core Committee for, for putting this together for us. So this is what every application runs on top of. Compute, storage, networking. And you know, compute is not just virtualization. Um, sometimes people think of OpenStack as, as virtualization management, but uh, OpenStack does, does virtualization, does containers, it does bare metal. Uh, in the keynotes tomorrow, we're actually going to get a peek at some of that when uh, Mark Collier does a, a series of demos and, and shows off some of this. So come back tomorrow morning as we, uh, as we kind of expand beyond uh, just these, uh, these basic building blocks. But, you know, this is the base. And uh, the OpenStack development community has done an amazing job of producing a solid core. The summits come after uh, our releases, and we get ready to start planning for the next release. And Kilo is, a, uh, is the 11th OpenStack release that, that we just had. Uh, it was a, a, a community effort. And I want to thank all of the contributors that, uh, that, that submitted code in the Kilo cycle. If you contributed to Kilo and you're here, could you stand up? 
Yes. So thank you. And you'll notice, you know, a very large percentage of the attendees here are the people who are building the software. So if you are one of those first-time attendees, if you're new to OpenStack, that's why it's so important to come to these summits, because you know, it's not just about the, uh, the, the, the sessions that we have in the conference. It's not just about the marketplace that we have. It's bringing together the whole community of products and services, developers, users, and that's what makes the OpenStack Summit so powerful. So thank you to all the contributors in Kilo. Before we, we go farther, I did want to mention one other thing. During the Kilo cycle, we lost a member of our community. Chris Yeo was a core committer, and he had a very big impact on OpenStack and on his fellow contributors. And uh, for the Kilo release, the technical committee and our community of contributors dedicated that to the memory of, of Chris Yeo, which I thought was just uh, a, a really great move. So um, I just wanted to take a minute to, to mention that and, and to remember Chris. And his family has asked for, you know, if you, if you want to do something for Chris, they've asked that uh, contributions be made in his memory to free to breed, free to breed. So just wanted to mention that because, you know, we are a community and, and I think that, uh, that it's one of the things that makes OpenStack really special. So Kilo took a lot of work, a lot of effort from a lot of teams. Um, there's one other person that I want to call out. We, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, OpenStack is broken up into different technical projects, and each of those projects has a project team lead who is responsible for guiding the efforts of, of their community of developers and uh, you know, setting priorities and moving the work along. And we elect those leaders from the developers every six months. And a lot of times, you know, these PTLs, they'll come back and they'll serve multiple terms. But uh, we, we have one that, uh, that was a PTL since the very beginning. And, uh, and, and she has recently decided to, to let someone else take the lead on documentation. And I just wanted to, to send out a special thanks and give some recognition to Ann Gentle, who's been so key to making OpenStack happen. And I think she's over there. So thank you, Ann. One of the really cool features that was in Kilo and uh, that I'm really excited to get to show you this morning was around federated identity. You know, this is a feature that's been developed over, over a couple of releases, but it's one that shows the power of having an OpenStack-powered planet with a global footprint of clouds. You know, if you have a lot of clouds, if they look and act the same, that's great. But once you have that, of course, you're going to want to take advantage of it. You're going to want to find the cloud that fits your needs the best, and you're, to go, you're going to want to integrate with it easily, to tie it into your application easily, basically to extend your footprint wherever you need to go. And so that is really what federated identity enables. And this isn't you know, a theoretical need. We're going to dive deeply into one particular industry here. That's the, uh, the TV and, and film industry. When you think of TV and film, you probably think of Hollywood. You think of you know, LA, Tinseltown, movie stars, all of that kind of thing. And, and the reality is that the way that TV and film is made is changing dramatically. This is data on the growth of production in various locations around the world over the last two years. And what you can see is that production globally is growing dramatically. And this is creating incredible shifts in their workflows and in how they make TV. But it's not just about this geographic distribution, which is, which is a huge issue. Uh, but there are other things that they're dealing with. You know, going to digital has enabled them to do a lot of new things, but has also created new challenges. So an hour of TV is usually 44 minutes of content. Does anybody want to take a guess about how many minutes of footage they shoot for 44 minutes of content? Anyone? 10,000. I heard someone say 10,000 out there. That is a big guess. So they actually shoot 3,600 hours, 216,000 minutes of television, sometimes across 20 or more cameras, multiple takes, across days and days of shooting, hundreds of thousands of minutes of television. An hour of 4K content is 700 gigabytes, 3,600 hours to go to that 44 minutes of content. So this is you know, a, a massive data problem, and they're doing this all over the world. 
so it's distributed. It's really interesting to see the challenges that they're facing. And so we're gonna take a little time, we're going to, like I said, dive deep into this. Um, to, to set this up, we have a video from an executive at TNT, Ron Vinkowski. So let's roll the video of Ron. I'm Ron Vinkowski, Vice President of Post-Production for Turner Broadcasting. When we were reliant on even file-based workflows, the movement of materials was somewhat clunky and not very cost-effective. Trying to figure out what particular file types for wh wh whomever, wh for whatever their needs are, was um, just cumbersome. I really like the evolution of cloud-based workflow. On our show HNX, for example, we have all of our dailies, raw dailies, stored in the cloud and our promo department can access it, our visual effects department can access it, everybody can access it immediately, and the efficiency gained by having a cloud-based workflow is just far superior to anything so far. So Ron talked about some of these challenges that they're facing, and what he said is that there's a, uh, an approach that they're using, which is, the, he called it a cloud-based workflow. And there's a company that, uh, that has built a set of services and products on top of OpenStack uh, to really address these needs and to create that cloud-based workflow. Uh, and that's Digital Film Tree. So to dig into this today, I want you to help me welcome from Digital Film Tree, Guillaume Obachon. Welcome, Guillaume. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Oh, thank you so much. It's so great to be back. I always enjoy coming to the OpenStack, every time. So uh, to touch a little bit on uh, what we do and how we take uh, that 216,000 minutes and whittle it down to 44, uh, is in, it's really indicative of the creative process. The creative process is a process of reduction. And you know, I compare making television to sculpture. So you which is a little ridiculous, granted. But you take a big block of marble, and you chisel away, and you get a statue. So there's so many people that contribute to this process of whittling down that material. You start with the editor who takes that content and really sort of trims the fat out of it and makes a small reduction. You have the director who has circle takes and gets it down to about 60 minutes, some sort of usable time frame. You have producers that come in that further whittle that down, about 50 minutes. You have the studio and network who give notes that make the content worse, but make the time shorter. So, and then you finally get to 44 minutes. You finally get to this magical number. So this is all a process and ultimately a problem of storage and accessibility having access for all these people and storing all this content to grant that access to them. So we have three challenges, essentially. We have multiple regions. We shoot all over the world. We have highly paranoid clients. We have studios and networks who don't want to be on CDN, so we have to go replicate content as close as possible to that production. So we need to be in multiple regions. And therefore, we need to be in multiple clouds. Not everyone is everywhere in this business. Some people have data centers closer than others. So we need to be on multiple clouds. And we also need to completely ditch physical migration for the reasons of data loss and just the inefficiencies of physical migration. And to speak to sort of this interoperability, HBO asked us, they came to us and they said, can you run on top of AWS, and we, because they already trusted AWS. And so what we were able to do is actually boot up an OpenStack instance, running our applications on top of AWS for those purposes. So really just to prove the point of OpenStack interoperability for our business. So one of the shows we did this year was this great show called Unreal. Shot in Vancouver six miles across the inlet, which I was informed it is an inlet. 
um, cut in Los Angeles, and all done on OpenStack. And really, this show could not have been done two or three years ago. And it needed to be done on Cloud Workflow. So the premise of Unreal is it's the, about the behind the scenes of making a reality show, aka like The Bachelor. And so what that required us to do is they would shoot content in the morning in Vancouver. We would push that material down to Los Angeles. Editorial would cut it. We would push it back up here. And they would play it back. And they would shoot a scene with the material they shot in the morning back here. So high res content, 4K content, back and forth within an eight hour period, basically. So really undoable without the cloud. Fortunately, at the same time, like, like a true television coincidence, at the same time Unreal was getting started, we were contacted about a proof of concept that OpenStack wanted to do around federated identity. And they wanted to do it with two providers. They wanted to do it with HP and Blue Box. And what this proof of concept allowed on Unreal was for us to run our private instances of OpenStack, running our open application in Vancouver and Los Angeles, and then instantly scale those workloads out to public cloud with HP and out to hosted private cloud with Blue Box. So instant scalability, uh, on-demand scalability with two little files. But because I'm a doer, and not a sayer, we wanted to prove to you how this works in practice. So Jonathan, if you want to bring that Sony 4K camera out, let's show them how this works. All right, here's the camera. We're going to make a little, uh, a little TV magic here. There you are. OK. So what are we going to do here, Guillaume? Oh, look, they're already waving. In ah. anticipation. <laughs> Everybody loves to see themselves on TV. OK, so I think we're going to shoot a little shot. OK. Yeah, so everybody over here, we're going we're gonna to get a shot and pan a little bit. So wave. Wave. Yell, yeah. Say hi to your Woo. mom. Give me some energy. More yeah, this energy. Is, uh, this is your TV moment. Yeah. All right, this section here especially, keep it going. Yeah. Keep it going. Come on, energy, energy, energy. A Five, vote for me, people. Four, a vote, a vote, a vote. Two, one, Woo. cut. I think I could do this. Uh, so, you know, I think three more <laughs> takes and we got it. <laughs> OK, so, so this is uh, some footage now that we've captured. So what are you doing here? So we got the little card. It was shot. Okay. It's a tiny little card, too. And this is a 4K camera. It is a 4K camera. OK. Newest cool. and latest and greatest from Sony. So we're going to take this footage now. And we've got um, our Aspera instance, which is running our, our Critique Cloud, which is backed by a Swift Okay. Back end. And we're going to create a new folder here called New Folder 2. <laughs> That's how lazy I am. <laughs> so and we're going to go ahead and upload this content uh, to Digital Film Tree. All right, and this is the process that, that you know, when you were here shooting Unreal. You'd, you'd take all this footage, and you would go. I think you, you told me before that you had a, a colo facility here and basically an upload node. Correct. Uh, we're actually still doing a show up here called Mistresses, which is done out of a colo. Shot and, uh, it's transported and transcoded simultaneously to Los Angeles every night. Wow, OK, cool. And before you were doing this with the cloud, how would you get this footage to wherever the production office was? Uh, either via some sort of courier service, or a poor PA would get on a plane with a drive. And uh, that's what PA. So they would for. physically carry it. Physically it's carry. It's digital data, but you'd be using petroleum transport protocol. Absolutely. Uh. <laughs> okay. I think what we should do is a bake off. Okay. So, we'll take this card, and I think we should physically ship it to Los Angeles. Okay. Can we uh, can we try to uh, get this shipped to LA as quickly as possible? <laughs> we'll get a tracking number and share that later, and we can uh, we can see how how it goes. So what, what happens now? We've, we've uploaded some footage. Well, I think Thomas, who's okay. one of our visual effects artists and colorists in LA, should do some magic as quickly okay, cool. as possible to it. Hello, Thomas. 
Hi, Guillaume. Hi, and Thomas. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> hi, Thomas. Welcome to the OpenStack Summit. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So uh, you, you have that footage. So prove to the good people that you have that footage. Oh. I'm looking at it right now. Look at that. Wow, cool. The beauty of cloud. Now, how do we know he's in LA, though? This, he yeah, how backstage. do we know you're in LA? <laughs> uh -oh. That's an excellent question. <laughs> I'm, I'm in LA. <laughs> OK, we'll, we'll trust you. You know, if you only looked more like a hipster, it would prove it out, I'm just saying. <laughs> Got to okay. look nice. Got to look nice. <laughs> so uh, I'll give you, what, like a like four and a half to five minutes? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, you do that. And we'll check back okay. in with you. All right, sounds good. Good luck. OK, so you know, we're, we're doing this demo here. But I, wanna, I want you to talk a little bit more about the process, you know, this, to go from camera you know, through the production. So essentially, what we just did is the first step of the process, which is a media acqui acquisition ingest process, transcoding that material, transporting that material simultaneously. And transcoding that material because we still need a proxy file. I mean, editorial, mobile viewing, all that accessibility I talked about, you, you're not going to be you, doing you that can't in full use 4K. the raw footage, yeah. Absolutely. So you still need that proxy file. And we're, simultaneously, we're doing metadata association because for us, we need to go back to that 4K. We need to deliver in 4K. But you're going to be working with the offline file, so you need to link them back up. And then obviously, we're granting access to that material, removing access, all these things that go into security. But for us, the, best, the biggest thing that we're doing is, yes, we're enabling all this efficiency. But what we're doing is actually we're sort of applying big data analytics to this footage for the first time. So we're really sort of contributing back this new sort of efficiency and data model and, and information back to the studios that they haven't had before. In Ron's video, I saw a lot of paper, a lot of books. That was how it was all tracked before, right? It was. And sometimes I have like a romantic, like, I look back at that and I go, oh, that was cool. And then I snap back to reality and go, oh, wait, no. Uh, and, and so you guys have built apps to do this, right, on, on top of OpenStack? Absolutely. We built Critique, which is our OpenStack-powered review and approval service. And we built ProStack, which is basically our Swift instance for media. OK, cool. So um, you know, who uses these, these apps and these services as, uh, as, as you, know, you go through the process? So really what this has enabled is us to to stitch together for the professional and, and provide them access in, in the same way that they're accustomed to with, um, with for instance, their, their baby videos. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're providing that same level of access you know, to the mobile, to the tablet, to the workstation, everywhere they are, through the web, um, to that content. OK. You mentioned that, uh, that, that you had, had expanded your workflow and done this with federated identity onto some other environments. So um, I want to bring out the, uh, the, the project team lead for the OpenStack Identity Service to talk a little bit more about that. So help me uh, welcome Morgan Feinberg. Hi, How's it going, Morgan? It's going well. So uh, you know, big release with Kilo, federated identity. Can you tell us a little bit more about what it is, what it enables? Sure. Well, let's be clear. We've had federated identity in OpenStack and Keystone since Ice House. What's new is the ability to really use a Keystone to Keystone deployment. OK, so linking OpenStack Cloud. Yes. Single source of identity, all controlled from one place. You don't have to worry about having every one of those sources of identity, every one of your partners, also having to have the data linked to every one of your clouds. So you can expand and contract dynamically, as needed, much as digital film tree is done with HP and Blue Box and this proof of concept. So what, what are the protocols? What are the technologies? What's the process involved to make that happen? So you start by authenticating with your private cloud, just like you normally would. You have username, password, and you get a token back. You can act on the resources on the cloud. You can create instances, do swift things, even manage Keystone assets, you know, make changes. At that point, you decide, I, I want to work with another provider. I want to work with Bluebox. I want to work with HP. And I hand Keystone the token and say, give me my authentication that, I, that the provider can understand. In this case, we use SAML assertions, um, the SAML 2 spec. The reason being is that it's a known quantity. It's a standard. The corporate security overlords, when they say, 
how are we going to uh, they know what it is. do this? Yeah, they, they, they know. It's a known quantity. We don't have to justify this is a crazy new technology. It's fairly well understood. OK, so, so this enables us to have a, a primary identity provider to take those resources and manage them in that instance, but then also to take our identity and go manage resources somewhere else. Absolutely. And once, you're, once you authenticate to the remote cloud, and the SAML assertion really is just a bundle of attributes. It says, you are, in fact, Jonathan Bryce. Mm -hmm. And you're allowed to do these things. At that point, you're given a Keystone token again, but now on the remote cloud. Okay. Guess what? Works the same as on your private cloud. Everything is so, the same. so it sounds like it's easy to spread the resources out, but how does that work in terms of security if I, you know, if I want to, to bring resources back in or control you know, this, this kind of sprawl of everything and who has access to it? So there's two pieces with the security. The first piece is that when I am removing a partner cloud, just because I don't need the capacity right now, I can remove that from the service catalog, and nobody can act and consume resources for it. And that's a new feature in Kilo as well, that the service providers are part of the service catalog. Okay. But more importantly, you have control of each individual user from a central source, meaning that if we decide that we're going to you know, not let Jonathan Bryce access any of the content for Unreal anymore, because we're done with that. You know, we don't yeah. need you to do that. Uh, at that point, we remove your access at the central source, at the Digital Film Tree private cloud. And you no longer have access in HP, in Bluebox, or any of the other clouds that have been expanded for this. And this is important for your industry especially, because you were, you were saying that you know, the security and access um, is so critical, but before you would have to go physically pick these devices up, pick these drives up. Absolutely, and we're firing people left and right, so, <laughs> you know. OK, it was, it was, well, so, so I want to I see, you know, you have these services that you talked about, and I want to see uh, how you can expand them from you know, your private cloud out. Absolutely. So, uh, so let's go to the demo on Guillaume's laptop here. What we have here, a proof of concept, not pretty, not pretty by any means, not styled. So uh, what we have here is that, you know, we're already running a, a, a couple of um, instances. Uh, we're running private instances of our OpenStack. Uh, we're running some workloads on, on top of Rackspace. And we're going to go ahead and add a service uh, to replicate. And we're going to replicate that from DFT, since we're the identity provider in this case. And we're going to replicate our ingest and storage instances. So basically, that's Swift and, and Nova Compute. And uh, we're going to replicate them to HP Cloud East. And we're going to hit Submit. And we're going to start booting up those instances on HP Cloud East and, and transitioning that workload there. And if you were to look behind the scenes and really take a look at like, what was being run, it's the same commands. It's the same hooks into libraries that if you type Nova boot, if you told Nova client to create these instances, it looks the same. It really is the same. It uses the same tool chain that already exists within OpenStack. So we don't have time to get into all of the details of, of how you made that happen. But I know that, uh, that you guys have another session um, that's, that's happening later today. And uh, it's the, the Federated Identity Deep Dive. And it's going to be um, 3.40 today. So if you want to go find out how they made it work, and you're going to have all of the text from the different companies that enabled this there, right? Yep. Then, you know, find this session, look it up in your app, and, uh, and go check out the Federated Identity Deep Dive. And definitely come ask your questions. We really want to answer your questions so that you can also make use of this technology. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Morgan. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. OK, so, um, so what's next? So I think we should check back with Thomas and figure okay. out whether he still is employed with me. <laughs> Thomas! Hello! Are you done? I, uh, I am, yes. I have everything completed, and it looks like we are up and ready for viewing. Ah. OK, so what do, we, what do we do to view this? I think we should view it on my phone. Ah, that's very, very much like a Hollywood producer of you there. Absolutely. So we're going to. Uh, we're logged into Critique, which is our uh, video streaming application. <laughs> All right. We're getting a little, uh, little peek at some of the shows that you work on here. You're gonna, about to get a peek at my password, too. <laughs> Yeah. 
Don't worry, I use that same password for everything. <laughs> <laughs> so is it uh, OpenStack 5.18.15? Yes, sir. Great. OK, so what, what do we have here? OK, so we got the shot. Oh, what? Oh. 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 <laughs> Thomas. Thomas, that, that, was, uh, that was the reserved seating section for press and analyst. Can you put oh, them really? back or? <laughs> Well, I'll, 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 I'll try and find them. <laughs> thank you so much, yeah, Thomas. Thank you very much, Thomas. No problem. Uh, so that was pretty cool. I mean, we shot some footage here. We put it in the cloud, replicated it to LA. He did, what did he do to it? <laughs> uh, he did some color. He did some visual effects. I mean, you know, and I have to be honest, the turnarounds on Unreal were crazy. But they weren't six and a half minutes, <laughs> which we just pulled up. Yeah, I mean, that was awesome. That was, that was very, very cool. And, and none of this Unreal or that shot would have been possible without OpenStack Cloud and without you guys and the OpenStack community and really driving this forward. So what we wanted to show you as a last little piece is the end credit bed from the first episode of Unreal that premieres in two weeks. And uh, let's roll that video. Wow. Thank you so much. I am always in awe. Thank you, Thank you Jonathan. So that is, uh, that's the OpenStack community's first film and television credit. And we're going to get to see that in, in two weeks when, uh, when this show premieres. Um, you know, Guillaume, he talked about going from camera to cloud and how you know, that is what they have to do right now in the film and television industry. And it's all powered by OpenStack. But there's actually another step that you can do with OpenStack, not just from camera to cloud. We can go all the way from camera to couch. So help me welcome some friends from Comcast, Mark Mule, <laughs> Sheila Sabi, and Andrew Mitri. Hi. How are you doing? Andrew, Sheila. Good to see you guys. Nice to see you. Thanks for having us. So what, uh, what, what can you show us here? Well, I thought we might at least try to see if we could get a preview of you know, Guillaume's work. OK. Unreal. Do our search here. There we go. Looks like we've got a trailer. OK. So this is, uh, yeah, that looks like the show that Guillaume was talking about. And uh, this is, you know, we, we brought, you brought your couch. Thank you. I, I know the you. hotel BMW, rooms are scarce here. Do. You didn't have to sleep on the couch. We could have gotten your room. We got rooms. Okay, so let's see what, what the trailer is here for this show. Hello, ladies. If you haven't got problems, I feel bad for your son. Oh, nice. People are gonna hate her. <laughs> Action. All right, so there's yeah. there's Guillaume's work. It'd and, be safer uh, to stop there. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, you know, here we 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 really see that uh, OpenStack plays a part in the production of this, all yep. the way through to you know watching it in your, in your home. Exactly right. So we were here in Portland you know, a couple years ago, and we showed the X1 guide working on top of OpenStack. And we put a lot more stuff on, on our OpenStack infrastructure. You know, all of the applications that we, that we showed the last time around, like the weather app, um, runs on top of OpenStack today. Uh, there's a number of other challenging apps that we've moved over to the OpenStack infrastructure. And it's really let us do things like, uh, for the Super Bowl or for World Cup, you only have a few weeks from the moment when all of the people that are creative decide what they want to implement to when you actually have to have it ready for millions of users. And so in a period of about four weeks, we can create an app from scratch, get it running, and scale it up for millions of Comcast customers. Now, I know, uh, you know that was a really cool demo that you did before, but you, you just talked into your remote. I did. And I like to play oh, with you the like gadgets, the toys, I... sure. <laughs> So, so how does that work? There, this is our talking uh, guide, which we, we have turned off. And this is the voice remote. So there's a little blue button there. Press it. Um, you'll get a little audio prompt. And then try a movie quote. OK. Uh, we, could, we had an alien abduction, so we could stay with the space theme. May the force be with you. Um, hit, since I'm in the weather app, hit exit to go oh, okay. all the way back out. <laughs> Sorry. 
User there we go. Error. Oh, it actually did it. And it did the search in the background. So there's Star Wars. So, uh, so we've got a uh, bunch of trailers. You can buy some movies your, your to app keep. app integrations. Yep. Um, you know, we had, a, we had Kilo, which uh, our Kilo logo was a little spinal tap reference. <laughs> this one goes to 11. Uh-oh, that one might be tough. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it was worth a try. So, so, so a lot of new apps in here and, and tight turnarounds on them. But Andrew, I know that, that you guys have also grown your infrastructure quite a bit during this time. Yeah, actually, so uh, since Atlanta, we've tripled our infrastructure, doubled since Paris. Um, and the treatment's grown about five times since we last demoed in Portland. Um, we now have, uh, our, our cloud serves internal customers. It's our products and services that run on it. And we have uh, almost 600 different internal projects or tenants running on our cloud and 1,700 users of our infrastructure today. 600 customers, 1,700 users. That's serious infrastructure. Yeah, uh, apps like uh, our NFV, uh, voice apps, uh, real-time video apps, all running on top of cloud today. OK. Well, the thing that, that I really appreciate about you guys is how much you give back to the community. And we were, we were just in, in uh, Philly a couple of months ago for the operators meetup. Yes, we hosted the operators meetup in Philadelphia in March. We've also led the IPv6 uh, sub-team in Neutron. We've contributed to about, I want to say, over 37,000 lines of code. Um, and we'll continue to do more. And yep. we're excited. Well, that, that's awesome. You know, most OpenStack users are not going to, to be contributing like that. But when we get some, some users like Comcast, like Yahoo, who are doing that, it really helps uh, keep the code base and, and the projects focused on the things that, uh, that are critical you know, for real world use cases. And because of that, you guys are one of our finalists for our Super User Award. So congratulations for that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. And uh, yes. <laughs> Tomorrow, we are going to be announcing the, the, uh, the winner of that. So thank you for joining us. And you'll have to come back tomorrow and see how you fare in we the Super User it. Award. We Thanks a lot, John. Yes. Thanks, John. Thanks, Andrew and Sheila. Thanks.